go live. Yeah, we're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. Four seconds, five seconds. We've been live for five seconds? Yes, we've been live. <laughs> now we're live for six seconds. Hello, sweet friend. Welcome to Watercolor Happy Hour. I am Volta, the artist behind Color Snap, and this is my husband, Daniel, um, the in house psychologist and the creator of these cocktails and the maker of the cocktails. Maker, I'm not the creator. We're making Manhattan. Sometimes creator. So you you have had some original cocktails that you made. Well, yeah, I've made some cocktails. Yeah, but this this one is your maker. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't take credit for Manhattan. I mean, if I did, I'd probably be a lot more famous than I am, which is not at all. <laughs> yeah, right. um, well, I'm gonna let you dig this one because I don't really know anything about Manhattan aside that it's not really something I would want to drink because it's got a lot of like, I don't know, whiskey stuff. You know, and it's, it's one of those things that's in history. It's like a it's martini. There, there is very little information about the history of Manhattan or it's like the origin stories. Very old books that you can find. Uh, like when I think of Manhattan, I always think of an old Simpsons episode where Bart ended up being a uh, bartender for the mafia, uh, and it was because he made a very good Manhattan. The thing about Manhattan is that it is an extremely easy cocktail to make. Um, the, only trick, the only trick to a well, a classic Manhattan uh, is getting a decent sweet vermouth. So, Costco, you, you can do a mess, you can do anything, any of the, the sweeter red vermouths, and from there you can just kind of work on pairing with whatever rye you want to use. So, a classic Manhattan is a two parts rye to one part sweet vermouth. However, where people get these wrong, they keep vermouth on the shelf. Uh, vermouth is a wine, it has less than 20% alcohol, therefore it will oxidize if you don't keep it cool. I have always ever known vermouth in our fridge, so that's fine. That's because I always yeah. keep it in the fridge. <laughs> so, thanks. Yeah. But a lot of people, and even a lot of bars, will keep it in the same place as liquor. Uh, but this one... Don't go to those bars. Yeah, this is 16% <laughs> alcohol. Anything below 20% can oxidize, uh, and it'll start to taste bitter. So you don't want to do that. Uh, now, some people will say vermouth will be bad after you know two weeks or a month in the fridge. I think if you keep it in the fridge, it can last at least three months, if not more. Uh, and it won't actually go bad bad. Uh, the worst thing that's going to happen, even if you left it out for like two years, is it'll turn into vinegar. Mm. And by that point, you're not going to want to drink it anyway. Yeah. Maybe it's in your salad or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're basically making an aged balsamic vinegar, but uh, yeah. the vinegar. I have a question from Darnell. Uh, does any kind of whiskey work, such as Oil. Ooh, that is an excellent question, Darnell. Thank <laughs> you for asking, because we're going to use two different types of whiskeys, uh, and you can and you can mess around based on what you're using in place of your sweet vermouth. So if you have a very like, strong vermouth, a very like one, uh, and in fact we're going to be using a Amaro in one of these, uh, which is much 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 more bitter than uh, a sweet vermouth. You can pair that with a sweeter bourbon or crown royal. This bottle cracks me up, you guys. Look how big bottle. it is. Look, all right. So, Weller Special Reserve Why? is it's it's so heavy. In, it's MSRP is very cheap, but for some reason, people have decided that Weller is a prestige brand of bourbon and they always snatch it off the shelves right away. Mm. And if you want the smaller bottles, they cost like 60 bucks, which yeah. is an outrageous price to pay yeah. for one of these. Uh, the Special Reserve, the 107 is is good. I mean, I guess it can justify doing that. But uh, this one is, is a, like a middle of the road, sweet bourbon, uh, a Buffalo Trace distillery, a slightly uh, well, exactly, a meatier version. Trace, uh, but for reasons that I don't fully understand, 
you can get occasionally the giant bottles of this stuff uh, pretty easily. And that's what we have here. Uh, it's great in a Manhattan because it's, you know, $30 for a giant bottle mm -hmm. of bourbon. And it is sweet. Like so many Manhattans. Yes. It's part of Manhattan business. Yes, but Crown Royal would work really well if you're using something on the more bitter side. Uh, so in this case, we're using a Amaro Zati. The Amaro Averna is the traditional one to use in, in, this, uh, in the, uh, the Black Manhattan or the uh, Amaro Manhattan. However, uh, we have this one. They taste very similar. This is just uh, has a slight more licorice flavor. So yes. So on to it, as I'm rambling yeah, on about questions. cocktails. Yeah, so please ask me questions. And, uh, oh. Tiffany said that she had no clue on um, the vermouth was not shelf stable. Yes, anything under 20% is not shelf stable. That's why you'll see a lot of stuff be roughly 20%. Mm -hmm. uh, that also is where they tend to have the threshold for uh, a lot of blue laws on what can and cannot be in a liquor store or what needs, what can or cannot be in a grocery store. Mm -hmm. uh, so below twenty percent will usually be considered a, a wine or malt liquor or something like that. Whereas above twenty percent is regulated, and required to sell a liquor store. Yeah. 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 But that's also why you'll see uh, like like bay leaves or whiskey cream liqueur, or tequila yeah. cream. Yeah. You can keep that. Even though it's milk, yeah, you can get that on the shelf because yeah. the alcohol is so high that nothing can survive. So, first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to make the traditional one. We are going to do that two to one mixture. Uh, you also notice I'm not using a shaker. That's because a Manhattan is usually uh, stirred rather than oh, stirred, not shook. Yes, not yeah. shook and mm -hmm. shook it. Uh, that is because you don't want a bunch of ice chips. You don't want a bunch of junk in there. You're just trying to make it cold. Mm -hmm. If you if you shake it, it gets really diluted. Oh, oh, by the way, this is Chattanooga whiskey rye. We're using a good like almost hundred proof rye because we want it to stand up to the sweet vermouth and we want kind of that spiciness. Uh, this is one a lot of people may not have checked out because it's a, uh, a Tennessee whiskey uh, out of Chattanooga. I think from this area. I actually went my uh, the first field trip that I remember. I believe first out of state field trip uh, was to uh, Chattanooga Aquarium. Oh, how cool. I know. So it's, it's, yeah. it's a little bit of a memory to me. You walk down memory lane. I didn't drink any of this because I was in sixth grade. Good. I did. I did enjoy the aquarium. Very nice. Uh, yeah. I, in fact, it was, uh, it was such a long trip that uh, we took a uh, charter bus and I was one of the first people to uh, fall asleep on the bus, and I remember that I got very irritated that somebody used a uh, little, uh, it was a little, like, like dolphin, one of those those, uh, those heads on sticks. Yeah. You remember those yeah. things? Yeah, they kept waking me up by grabbing my nose with it. Oh, yes, that would make me super grumpy. Yes, oh, and I got distracted from my story. You do need to add uh, bitters. So I'm going to do a dash of each of the Angostura ones. Bitters are also held in the fridge. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Typically. I guess they don't technically have to because they are pretty high in alcohol content. But because they aren't used very much, and they, mm -hmm. they tend to keep the bottle for like years, yeah. it's a good idea mm -hmm. to do them. So I'm going to do a dash of Ango. Regular and a dash of uh, orange. Mm -hmm. so yeah. We're just going to spin that up, but not enough to get ice chips in it. And again, that's two to one. Take the strainer. Just pour it in the glass. Nice color. Yeah. Okay, 
Uh, how many total ingredients do you need for this drink? Three. Not counting the cherry. Will uh, you repeat them? Yes. Well, I guess in this case four, but then yeah. there's some type of whiskey, some type of vermouth fortified wine, mm -hmm. and some type of bitter. Mm -hmm. The combination is up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're doing, right now we just did the classic one. We did rye with a sweet vermouth, mm -hmm. two parts whiskey, one part vermouth, bitters to taste. We did orange and uh, orange and Angostura. Mm -hmm. So now let's try this. I'll pull for the sample too. Uh, question did, from Tiffany, did you make the cherries? Did you make the cherries, Dan? Did you go to Italy? Are they from Italy? Uh, they're, they're bottled in Italy. So these are the Maraschino. Maraschino, the, the the Venetian style. So there's a whole history behind these cherries. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which, <laughs> yes, these are strong cocktails. But delicious if you're into that. Yeah, and I believe they're from, uh, it's not Croatia. God, what's that? Oh. Is that a state? Oh, yeah, probably will say. Uh, but yeah, it's from a very specific region in uh, Marsaka cherry from Austria. Oh, where is it? I don't oh, where it's it where it's from. Uh, but it is not it but is not made, Italian. But it's made in Italy. At least this well, they're, brand. They're they're jarred in Italy. Jarred. And there's a whole thing because the Venetian merchants cornered the market on these Marsaka cherries. Uh, they soaked them in a maraschino liqueur uh, to preserve them so that they could be shipped around. Marasca, not um, Marsaka. No, sorry, Marasca. Marasca mm -hmm. cherries. Uh, and for years, for decades, a century or more. They had the market cornered, uh, and then American ingenuity came around, and we uh, we we made what we know as Mara, Maraschino. 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 Yeah. Maraschino. Maraschino. I would say those look prettier, but they taste worse. So these yeah. are so delicious. Like you could put them in like ice cream. Yeah, you can pick the syrup oh, and just kind of spray it into the ice oh, cream. So it, is, it is an infinitely yeah. more complex and delicious yes. flavor, and they're like yeah, they're just, definitely also pricier, but yeah. worth it if you want to like use them for like a special cocktail. Yes. And then we also have another question from Dr. Voloshin. Um, Does the order of the mixing matter? Ah, that's a great question. No, in this case. Okay, so you could technically start, you're like, oh, I have bitters, start with bitters. Yeah, and some people do that. Okay. Um, but what people usually do is uh, start with the most expensive ingredient first, uh, mm -hmm. just because you, if you overdo a really good whiskey, mm -hmm. like you're like, oh, I poured too much of that, you can yeah. just like pour it off and oh, say, yeah. ah, here we go, yeah. done. Um, alternatively, some people throw the cheapest stuff first because then you can throw it away. Yeah. But if you mix it all together, yeah. order doesn't matter that much. Uh, there's a few that do matter if you're putting in uh, egg whites. So if you do uh, yeah. egg whites, you should always do the egg whites first. Yes. No, oh. first. first. Oh, okay. Uh, because you don't want chunks of egg. Like, I would have messed. Eggshell. Yeah. In it. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes you're going to do like a dry shake. Okay. Oh. Now you can do the egg whites in another area, yeah. but if you want to, you know, Froth up the egg whites and emulsify them a bit first. Okay. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Chemistry yes. and science. All right. So, this one we're going to be doing the Black Man. I'm just going to say hello to people that are joining. Hi, people that are joining. Hello, everyone. Hi, Yolanda, Georgetta, Dr. Voloshin, and Darnell, Tiffany. Patricia, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Where are these people coming from? Yeah, we're making a very boring cocktail. I mean, Dan is making boring cocktail. <laughs> okay, we're gonna paint an exciting. Yeah, it's cocktail. like not very fun to paint. I mean, if you look at it, it's just not colorful. But but we'll make it work. We'll still have fun. <laughs> I'll have fun here. Yeah, you'll have fun drinking apparently both of these because <laughs> yeah, and this one we're using chocolate bitters. Oh, chocolate bitters. Which oh, could you use chocolate bitters on like other stuff and cocktails? Yeah. It, it smells like uh, Oh this smells so good. Oh my god, these are delicious. They're like uh, delicious. yeah, they're like a Mexican hot chocolate uh -huh. is what it kind of smells like. 
you know, uh, if you are looking for bitters, there's a whole host of them out there. There's a whole bunch more like these Angostura ones. Like most people associate, well, exactly this bottle that's all like dirty and covered. Yeah. Is that like Angostura. a very um, iconic Angostura bottle? Do they all look like this in other people's homes? Yes. Like, Almost anybody who has had one, it's been in there forever. Okay. It's all like stained. Uh -huh. And they, and they, yeah, they okay. their, their trademark so is that good. the label. So good. Is is high up. That's what they do. Yeah, right? it's got charm. Yeah. It's been a little used. Yeah, but these guys, uh, Fee Brothers, you'll see, uh, you'll see uh, Fee Brothers stuff, and then mm -hmm. that's where you can get like the, the chocolate bitters, the cucumber cool. bitters. Uh, I want to say there's a whole bunch of mango bitters. bitters. Probably. Oh, yes. I don't know. Can we make a mocktail with these bitters? Or they are alcoholic, alcoholic okay. so it would be, it would be a low. You could make like a. Actually, no. There, there, are, there is not. There's no alcohol in this. Huh? I don't think there is. No. Oh wait. Oh, alcohol flavor. So there's a small uh, amount of alcohol. Oh damn! Let me. Let me get this. Yeah, there's a spot on this glass. Could you clean it off with that beautiful towel? It happens to be hanging up behind me. That's a different design. That's another design. Wow, look at all these designs. This episode is sponsored by Color Snack. In case anybody wants a towel. <laughs> yeah, Volta. Anyway. Yeah, Volta just uh, made a new design. I had a towel moment. She was excited about the watermelon and she decided to design a towel. I should make a cocktail towel. Yeah, you should. Like a recipe? All these ingredients. Mm -hmm. Like a cocktail recipe on a tea towel. See, look at how, look at all that, oh, that syrup. Yolanda's asking if it tastes like chocolate. Um, do you think the bitters taste like chocolate? It's not like chocolate. And so I've never actually tried it by itself. It's called bitters. It's probably it's like not. cocoa. Like, uh, like dry just cocoa? dry cocoa, yeah. Yes, let's see what we have here with this guy. Oh, Tiffany, thank you so much. She said that she ordered her watermelon towel today. Oh, that's good. Okay, chocolate bitters, I'm trying. Chocolate bitters in the morrow. Mm. I wouldn't call that a Manhattan. That's that's not at all. Like okay, was... this tastes better than that one. Yeah, it doesn't taste as strong, like, spirit forward. It's yeah. got, like, a chocolatey undertone, which is very nice. Mm. Okay, that's okay. That, I, I would, I would... If, if somebody gave, if I asked for a Manhattan and I got that, I'd still be happy with the drink, but I'd be like, what is this thing? That's oh, not a Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, it tastes, I don't know, it tastes like chocolate whiskey. It tastes better than a Manhattan. <laughs> uh, that's subjective. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Subjective. Yeah. At best. All right, right so the paint. Okay, yeah, there's the paint. So both of us, both of sat long enough. He's waiting <laughs> patiently while I talk about bourbon and what else ever I want to talk about for a while. Chattanooga, field trips, all this stuff. Uh, yeah. I've been behind a computer all day. I can, yeah. finally, I can finally stand in front of a computer it's, and a camera. And exactly. <laughs> okay. Bye. Right. Uh, since nobody was asking, um, I do have another tea towel design. <laughs> All right, I'll go. So. I'm really proud of this design, though. <laughs> it's an oh, it's an infographic. Answer. It's an infographic, but also like a towel. So it tells you stuff, but also you can use it. And it looks pretty, I think. <laughs> yes. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Own it, do it. Oh, your mom is asking where she can order the towel. Oh, uh, I will. Uh, actually, I made a post today, Yolanda, on LinkedIn. Uh, but I'll send you the link. I'll send you the link in the in the private message afterwards. Thank you so much for asking. Well, that's good. Oh yeah, actually, uh, yeah, Jim, can you look it up? It's I don't know if you can drop a link in the chat. I mean, there's some places that it won't go to, but I can definitely. Uh, 
www.kota.com slash watercolor dash tea dash towels. Shoot, I typed in the first uh, last part. Um, okay, okay. Let me not make your computer sick. Good. All right, so um, we'll, we'll make the most of this uh, cocktail. So it is a fun little shape. It's like a little triangle. So we're going to start with two lines and kind of get to each other. So as if you're sketching a triangle, so then at the bottom, uh, it's going to have like a little curved line. And then at the top, um, I made a, a slight curve that kind of goes upwards. And that's just like as if, you know, you're looking at the glass slightly from like below so you can see the top. And then we have the two parallel lines for the stem. Right underneath here. And then we're gonna have two slightly curved lines that are gonna go outwards like this. And a slightly curved line that connects them for the base of the glass. So roughly like, it's, you know, kind of, if you think about it, it's like a triangle shape and you have two parallel lines and a few little curves here. Um, I'm gonna add another curved line here to show like the, the contents of the gloss and then the circle shape inside for the maraschino cherry. Right. So both of you do yeah. have another question yes. from Tiffany asking, uh, give us ideas about great summer batch cocktails. And, oh, you know, yeah. the one that came to my mind first. Which one? Yeah, I think you have those ideas. I do. Yeah, so that's why she was asking oh, me. Okay. <laughs> okay, Dan, good luck. Uh, no, no, so the, the thing that, that came to mind was yeah. uh, that, uh, that watermelon cocktail that we made a few years ago. Yeah. Where you make it in the watermelon. Yes. I want to say it was a soju. Kind of, yeah. Or was so. it a soda jewel? But so, uh, the so, I can never pronounce it correctly. It, it, it's a, it's a, a Korean rice wine uh, drink. It's like. Uh, it's like it's like uh, it's like sake, but it's a little sweeter uh, and a little higher in alcohol. But you can make a, a, a blended cocktail inside a watermelon. So you just put the watermelon down, dig it out a bit, pour a bunch of uh, I want to say it was like Sprite and so oh, yeah, yeah, and then blend it up. Boom! Watermelon cocktail be the life of the party. Is there, can you um, replace soju if people don't have it or can't find it? Yeah, I mean, you could use, I'm sure you could use vodka, you could use, uh, probably add some sugar in there too if you're going to do that. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, let's see, what would be good or wrong, I guess? Because vodka and Sprite is not a good combination. Uh -huh. it, it, it tastes like, it tastes like alcoholism, for lack of a better term. Uh -huh. It's like it's like I'm gonna I'm gonna drink this in in high school type of thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, real quick, while while you think it's of like, other tastes like desperation. While you think of other batch cocktails, yeah. uh, I just want to share. Like I, I was using a little bit of brown and mixing it in with orange. Sangria, white sangria. That's a good batch. Sangria. White. Sangria. Yeah. white? Okay. For summer, because that's a good white one. Oh. Grapes. Uh -huh. Okay, sorry, keep going. Yeah, no, I was just saying, uh, mixing uh, some browns with orange just to get that whiskey like color. And I'm painting on dry because this area is fairly small, so I want to have control over my, uh, my lines and my brush strokes. And I'm just going to paint kind of around the cherry. So that's the first layer, and uh, in this example, I, I kind of lifted off some color uh, off on the right hand side. So I'll just match that. Usually, that, that's basically like an indication that the light source is hitting this glass on this side. So I'm just pressing down, I'm lifting, pressing down. But you notice like the color is off, like the uh, it's the value of this cocktail is much lighter than this one. So that just means that we need to go back in and add 
drop in more color in here. And feel free to like mix in any kind of browns that you have with darker, darker colors as well. Let's see, we need to get some of this. So basically, um, I definitely like took a, a, a couple, like I waited for a few layers to dry and then I added uh, another layer on top. And that's when, when you do that, the more layers you add, the more saturated or um, more like pronounced and vibrant your, your sketch will look. So it's not necessary, but it's just like if you're looking, I was kind of looking more for like that realism look. Uh, because I got bored painting it. <laughs> so, but you can keep it really quick and short and sweet and just drop, drop in some color here. There we go. And make it nice when the colors are kind of spreading out, doing their own thing. Thank you, Londa. Uh, it's, it's commenting on me enjoying the cocktails, and I'm clearly enjoying the cocktails more than you are painting them. Yes. <laughs> you were really excited about the Manhattan, and I was like, okay. It is one of my favorite cocktails. Yes. It's, it's simple, it's significant, and yeah. you can... I like, I like stuff where the variation comes from the quality or the nuance of the ingredients rather than just adding junk to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, okay, I added lemon to this, or I added more sugar, and did all these other things. But if you can say, oh, well, somebody spent you know, centuries perfecting this recipe for vermouth and somebody else spent decades getting this recipe for rye just right and I compare them together, that's that's so much more of a challenge and so much more fun and nuanced mm -hmm. than just, you know, I'm going to put some, some juice with this, which can be fun too. Yeah. Nice. I love, delicious. I love juice. But sometimes it's it's, it's creativity yes. as the uh, creativity drives with uh, restraint. Mm -hmm. Very true. For somebody that's not as great, having having restraint helps me. Almost like you can just give her a bucket of paint and she'll paint anything <laughs> in the world. Hey, I think creativity comes in many um, forms. It's it doesn't have to be just painting. It can be creative with data. Yeah, that's true. Data and science. Yeah, right. All right, real quick for the maraschino cherries, I'm I'm using um, a, a cooler red, which is like an alizarin crimson in my case, and also adding some purple to get this really nice dark color. Because the cherries are uh, very much like of a dark purple color. So now I'm just gonna use that to play. And um, ideally, I would let this first uh, layer kind of dry because it is gonna start to blend in with the other color here. But um, if you're going for like a quick watercolor look, I think it's still fun because it, it gives that very much watercolory effect. And even like if some of it drips down, like I, I kind of like that sometimes. Um, you know, this this one took a lot more like time and precision, whereas this one is a lot more fun to me because it's just kind of quick and I'm just like playing with colors essentially. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna lift off a little bit. Oops, no, that's what happened when I don't have my brush. Did you say they were from Croatia? Or was they saying they weren't? They are from Croatia. Maraska are from Croatia. Okay. So if you accidentally um, try to lift off some color, with, but you already have some color on the brush, you just clean it off and lift it off again. Super easy. Uh, all right, and that's pretty much it. So it's it's kind of like a more playful, like loose. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of give you an option, you know, if you want to, it doesn't have to look, look precise, as long as you're having fun with your watercolor sketching. That's, that's the most important part. Yes. 
Oh, Darnell's saying happy watercolor. See you at the next happy hour. Thank you, Darnell. Oh, thank you so much. Now I'm going to have to ask you about the, the letters after your name next time. You've got a lot of them. Yes, yes. We want to learn all about CPRS, TM, CFS, register, CF. E-I-T-M. Oh, yeah, my man Darnell over there, he's even got like the, the, the proper registrations. One of two of trademarks, one's registered. What a professional man. Awesome. LinkedIn profile. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, David. Yeah, I, I like, you know, switching it up a bit. Yeah, well, there's only so much you can do with the brown triangle. Exactly, yeah, because like, yeah, I wanted to, you know, just have fun with it, so here we go. Yeah, which one is the best one? The one that you like? I think it's this one. Okay. Let me double check. Yeah. I'll just take a sip. Yeah. Yes, it is out. Okay. The darker of the two. Oh, yeah, cheers. Cheers, look at that. Yeah, we both have a drink. Cheers to you all. Cheers. Thank you guys Wednesday. so much for joining us. Um, we'll be back next week. Uh, <laughs> are those watercolor pants? Uh, now, these are not watercolor pants, but they are a collection by Tabitha Brown at Target. Not sponsored. I'm just a huge, super fan of Tabitha Brown. If you don't know her, look her up. She's got like the most, uh, just like best vibes. Best, she's like sunshine in human form. Um, but yeah, I got these at Target. Volta completely <laughs> leaned into the, uh, the 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 millennial trend of coastal grandmother. Oh yeah. And I, yeah. I can't say I blame her. It's very comfortable. They're very comfortable too. Yeah, I got pockets, pockets, comfort, and yeah, <laughs> that's it. Meanwhile, I've completely leaned into my my. <laughs> I'm I'm a guy that's in technology, and I wear a black shirt and blue jeans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so nice to wear a black shirt, but I don't need to pick out anything. It's true, it's very easy to make your outfit. Yeah, I found sure a set of shirts that fit at Target, and I just keep buying them. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I, I highly recommend it. Yes. Give it a oh, try, guys. It's so good. Okay, the chocolate on the bitters that bitters like, need to have a moment. Ooh, I have chocolate fee brothers bitters. Brothers. Oh, Angostura is the brand. Angostura is the brand, but they have like their okay. traditional okay. one. Yeah. That is the Angostura. Fee Brothers chocolate. Yeah. Fee Brothers is yeah. their, their Aztec chocolate. Okay, well, thank you for correcting me. Yeah, you don't want to sound on me. I don't want to put it under the store. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what? Some people. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> thank you, guys. Oh, yeah. Really okay, yeah. Everyone's <laughs> like, check it out. Yeah, yeah, you guys. <laughs> Uh, no we're going to go get some pizza. Uh, but have a great rest of your week. And we'll see you same time, same place next week. And if you have any um, requests or like ingredients, questions, uh, Dan wants to talk about uh, anything that's like whiskey stuff. Or um, anything. I have lots of opinions. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. And literally. Yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> uh, Daniel Smith, good luck finding him. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yes. Who knows? Bye, guys. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs>